In this lecture, let's learn how to pass a query string from a URL in Node.js. Now, we already learned what a query string is. A query string is basically a key value pair which we specify after a question mark. So, for example, currently we are in the products resource. After that products, if I type question mark and if I say id equals 10, this id here is a query string. Now, if we want to have two query strings, then we can use the end symbol and then we can specify another query string. So, for example, name equal to iPhone. So, this name is another query string. So, in this URL, we are specifying a query string after this question mark. And if I go to VS Code, and if we scroll down, here, this request.url, it will return us this URL. But from this URL, we want to pass the ID and the name query string and its values. And to do that, in Node.js, we need to import another package, which is the URL package. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's create a variable. Let's call it URL. And here, let's go ahead and let's use this require method to import the URL package. Now, this expression here is going to return us an object. So basically, it is going to return us a URL object, which will be assigned to this URL variable. Now, let's go ahead and let's use this object. So this URL object has a method called pass. So here, let's say url.pass and to this url.pass method we need to pass the url which we want to pass and we are getting that url inside this request.url so we want to pass this url which we are receiving inside the url property of the request object and then this pass method also takes an optional second parameter which is a boolean value so if we specify true here in that case this parse method will parse the query string from the URL. If we specify false here, in that case, it will not parse the query string from the URL. But here, we want to parse the query string from this URL. So for that, we are going to parse true. And again, this expression is going to return us an object. Let's go ahead and let's store that object in a variable. For now, let's simply call it as x. And let's go ahead and let's log that x in the console. Let's save the changes. Let's stop the server here by pressing Ctrl C and let's restart the server. Let's go to the web page and let's make a request to this URL. And if you notice in this URL, we have two query strings, the ID and the name. Let's go ahead and let's make a request. And here we see this error page not found. Now, if I go to VS Code, here you will notice that in the console, an object has been logged. So here you can see an object has been logged, a URL object. And this URL object has a bunch of properties, for example, protocols, slashes, auth, host, port, etc. But the one which we are interested in is this query property and this path name property. This path name property is basically storing the resource. So in the URL, if you notice, the resource is slash products. So the path name property here, it is storing that resource name. And this query property, it is assigned with an object. And if you notice, in this object, we have the query string and its value as the key value pair. So basically, this object is storing the query string as its properties. Now what we want is, from this object, we want to extract this query property and this path name property. For that, here I am going to use object restructuring syntax. And for the object destructuring syntax, we use a set of curly braces. And inside that, we specify the property names. So here, for the property name, since we want to extract this query property and the path name property, in object destructuring syntax, the variable name which we specify inside this object destructuring syntax, it must match the property name which we want to extract. So here, we want to extract this query property. So here, the variable name I'm going to keep as query. And then, we also want to extract this path name property. So here, the variable name I'm going to specify is path name. Now, we can also specify an alias for this path name. So basically, here if you notice, we are creating this path variable and to that, we are storing the URL which the user has entered in the address bar. If he has entered the root URL slash home, in that case, slash home will be assigned to this path. If the user has entered root URL slash about, then about will be assigned to this path. But if the user has typed root URL slash about and then a question mark and a query string like name, in that case, that complete URL will be assigned to this path. But we don't want that. 
to this path we simply want to assign the resource name so here to this path name i am going to specify an alias and i will call it path so this path is basically going to store the resource name it is either going to have slash home slash about slash contacts slash products so it is going to store a value like that this path here is not going to store the query string because here if you see we actually typed this url in the address bar so slash products after that question mark and then we specified the id and name query string but here this path name is simply assigned with the resource name which is slash products in this case so here this path will be assigned with the resource name which we have typed and that's what we want to use so here let's comment this path variable and now we want to use this path variable now what about this query variable how do we want to use it so what i'm going to do is in this product list html here we have two buttons so this buy now button and this show details button now we don't need this buy now button for now so i will simply remove it but we do need this show details button to show the details of that particular product so here instead of having a button i'm going to change it to anchor element and there i am going to specify the href attribute and to this i am going to assign a url so here when this show details link is clicked i want to redirect the user to slash products and then after that i am going to use this question mark and then i want to have an id query string and to this id query string i want to assign the id of that particular product for that what i am going to do is here again i am going to use a placeholder and i will call this placeholder id and in our app.js where we are replacing those placeholders let's go ahead and let's copy this line and here let me also replace this id placeholder with the id of the product so in the product.json you will notice that each product has this id property and i want to replace this id placeholder with the value of that id property so here i will say prod.id okay and here we are logging this variable x but we have already removed that variable x so let's also comment this console.log statement now let's save the changes let's start the server by running this app.js file and let's go to the web page let me make a request to this products page so here we can see all the products now when i click on the show detail button of this first product just notice what happens in the address bar so currently it is root url slash products but when i click on the show details button you will notice that after this products this id query string has been added and the value of that id is zero if i click the show details of second product there you will notice that this id query string is assigned with the value one if i click on the third show details button here the id is two if I click on the show details button of last product here the ID is 7 now what we want is we want to pass the value of this ID query string and based on that ID value we want to display the details of that particular product for example this 7 is the product ID for the last product basically this product so in the query string in the URL when the query string is ID equals 7 we want to display the details of the product where the id is 7 basically we want to display the details of this last product to the user for that we need to pass this url and we are already passing this url at this line so in this query variable we are going to have an object and that object is going to have an id property with the value which we have in the query string so what i'm going to do is let's go to the slash products route so here we have this slash products route inside this route before executing this logic let's also check if the query object has some properties so here i'm going to use the if statement and here i will check if the query object if it has the id property and on that i will use this not operator so if this query object does not have an id property in that case we want to execute this logic but if this query object does have an id property 
that means in the url after the products we have an id query string so in that case let's say we want to send some other response for that i will use this response dot end method and there for now let's send a text response so here let's say this is a product with id equals and then let's use the value of the id property so here i will say query dot id with this let's save the changes let me stop the server and let's restart the server let's go to the web page so here if i type products after that if i specify question mark and id equals 7 so basically here we are specifying a query string called id with the value 7 if i press enter we get this response this is a product with id equal to 7 as you can see if i say id equals 100 and if i press enter we get another response this is a product with id equals 100 so now based on the value of the id property we are getting different responses if i change the value of this id property to 1000 and if i press enter you will notice that now we have the response this is a product with id equal to 1000 and if i don't specify any query string after this products and if i press enter it will take us to the products page so in this lecture we learned how to extract the query string from a url using the url.parse method this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day